Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here tonight. No, I'm not going to lead singing, and no, Carrie's not going to preach. Just who said awe? That's unfair. And welcome to those who are watching online. This morning we had a great faith promise response. We went over our goal, and this is exciting. However, I made a mistake. Can you believe it? It's the first in 58 years of living. But I was counting the cards, and there were five that ended up here in my fingers. And then we were swapping things around, and we ended up counting five cards twice and one card not once. So it changed the numbers on us. But I just want to tell you, it's my responsibility, and I boo booed. And so we are over 60. So now, if you haven't turned your card in, you will really make the difference. We're not at 75,000. We are at 60,700, which is amazing. But if you didn't get your card in, get it in because we're over, but let's really go over the top tonight. And I wanted to get up and just say, I made a mistake and I apologize for that. And I want you to know that, that thank God for Sandy, she bailed me out and we got it right. And never send a man to do what a woman could do well by herself. Exactly, right? I get it. But nonetheless, I'm excited to see where we go tonight. We have the cards in. We're going to pass the cards out at the end of the service. And if you've not gotten your card in, you are holding out to the end. Tonight's your night. Amen. Brother Kerry, come lead us in songs. Amen. If you go ahead and take your hymnal, turn number 233 with me. Number 233, let's stand up together. You know, what better song to sing than little as much when God is in it? And um, I was talking to my dad this afternoon. Praise the Lord. He is, uh, he's struggling, um, but he's getting through. My mom is doing a lot better, so praise the Lord for that. Um, she had something that just was going on in her head, and uh, it just felt like a really strong head cold. Um, but she's doing a lot better now, so praise the Lord for that. Thank you so much for praying. Um, continue to pray for her. They are still planning, as far as I know, to go on vacation this week, um, just to relax even more, okay? But uh, continue to pray for my dad. He has been really struggling today, um, but God has been very good. I know that he was very encouraged um, when he heard that we had gotten the goal. And um, as I was telling Brother O'Malley, when I first heard him talking to my dad and we had found out that it was actually a little over 60,000, it kind of encouraged me a little bit and it convicted me because I was very excited about a goal that we had gone over this morning, but I wasn't as excited for the fact that, like he preached the other night, we're giving for the sake of the gospel and God's namesake. It's not about a goal. And so I'd encourage you tonight, if you have not given, tonight's your night, okay? Uh, because we get to give for the gospel's sake and for Jesus' sake. Would you sing this with me, number 233? Little is much when God is in it. In the harvest field now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark, the voice of God is calling. It's calling you. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it and he'll not forget his home. Little as much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Would you turn around someone and shake their hands real quick? Tell them they look great tonight, even if they don't look great tonight, okay? <laughs>
right, as you're heading back to your seats, we're going to do that third verse together. If you lost your place, stay standing with me. Number 233, are you laid aside from service, body worn from toil and care? You can still be in the battle in the sacred place of prayer. Let's try that third verse together. Ready? Are you laid aside from service, body worn from toil and care? You can still be in the battle in the sacred place of prayer. Little as much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. On that last verse, everything you have for the Lord. When the conflict here is ended and our race on earth is run, he will say to all the faithful, welcome home, my child will run. Little as fun, when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Great singing. Thank you so much. You may be seated. All right. Thank you again for coming tonight. Now, like uh, was said earlier, you do have an opportunity. If you did not fill out one of our Faith Promise mission cards and hand them in, this is your opportunity to be part of our missions giving and uh, financially support people that are going in your stead because it's your responsibility the same as it's my responsibility to go out and reach all the world and that includes in my neighborhood and it includes in indonesia in spain and japan and all those other kind of places so you can't be everywhere at once so but your money can and that's what it, our faith promise is all about so if you have not filled that card out then i encourage you to do so now uh two things that we need to um keep in mind and then i'm going to have a fun announcement up here on the board uh again First one is pray for pastor. Pastor is uh, battling the sickness and keep him in prayer. We don't want to eat up his vacation time. It's the most inopportune time to get sick when you're supposed to go in R&R. &R. Um, so just pray that he gets over this really soon. Uh, Miss Dawn is doing better than he is. All right, she's coming out of it, but he is uh, not so well. Um, it's nothing serious. It's just very uncomfortable. So just pray that he gets over it. Um, the other thing is we had just found out that uh, Mr. Bunny... Um, uh, Jerry and Donna, uh, Donna's mom, Jerry, or J Donna's father, uh, Jerry's father-in-law, uh, he passed away last night. And uh, he's been up there at the Jefferson uh, Convalescent Home uh, over there on Jefferson Avenue. And more details to come for the funeral, uh, they'll be uh, coming soon. Um, but just uh, keep, keep available for that. And whenever those come on out, then just come and support the family. Uh, but be praying for Jerry and Donna and uh, the rest of the family involved. Okay, those are my two things, my t uh, two announcements to pray for. But then um, if Mr. Ray could put up our slide, I want to give an announcement for our missionary needs. And this is exciting. Already, the first time I put this up here, and there's something else that's, gotta come, that's gonna pop up, and it's gonna be uh, an encouragement. So do you see what's crossed off there? Brother Callahan already had his uniform paid for, so I'm sorry if you already have a uniform in the trunk that you didn't give him yet, uh, hope he kept the receipt. Okay, he doesn't need two. But that is already paid for. That's a need met that's going to help him in his ministry. So if you have tires, if you have chairs in your closet, I mean, any of those things, uh, that'd be welcome to give as well. And uh, if you give one of those tangible items, again, let us know so I can let you know so that there won't be this uh, double buying, okay? And... Uh, it was really exciting for Brother Callahan, and uh, I heard he lost it, which I probably would too, financial. Um, if you've ever been in the military, you know how uh, annoying it is to buy uniforms, all right? And how he's out of the uniform se or several years, and he still has to buy a uniform. Uh, but this is a need met, and it's great. All right, so praise God for that. And uh, that's all my announcements. I'm going to let Carrie come up and have another song. All right, we're going to do offering in just a moment, guys. But before then, we're going to go ahead and do our theme song, Miss Amy. And uh, if you'll stand up with me one more time, then after our theme song and our offering, we'll get Brother Henry up here, and he's going to do his presentation. Um, but I'm kind of excited. This is our, I mean, I'm sad at the same time. It's our last time for a while doing our theme song. But haven't you enjoyed this? It's been a great song. Arise and go. 
Go ye therefore. Let's sing this together. Matthew 28 is the this passage that we're going out of. Let's sing this as best we can for the Lord tonight. Ready? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, go, go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, go, go. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost. Go, go, go. As the guys are coming forward, let's sing it one more time. Here we go, ready? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, go, go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, go. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost. Go, go, go. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Zach, would you mind praying for the offering tonight? Amen. Amy. All right, Brother Henry, we're going to turn it over to you, and um, we're thankful. Aren't you glad the Henrys were able to make it this week? Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you all. It's, uh, thank you for this opportunity for me to be in this conference, and I want to thank you all for your prayers and your financial support to the ministry. I'm going to show you the video first and then maybe uh, say a few things after the video. India has always welcomed the traveler and often held him in her embrace forever. With various religions and races came variety of ethnic types, art, culture, languages, and customs. India extends from the lofty Himalayas across the broad Ganga plains and peninsula plateau which dips to the shores of the vast Indian and Arabian oceans. India is a secular democracy and is the home of Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, and many other religions. In India, religion is a way of life, an integral part of one's day-to-day -day activities, influencing every aspect of life. Each religion even has its own pilgrimage sites, legends, and heroes. Hinduism is one of the world's oldest religions, originated in India and has its largest number of followers here. As per the history, Christianity was brought to India by the Apostle St. Thomas. As per the census, 80% Hindus, 12% Muslims, 3% Christians, and all other isms, but most probably there are 5 to 8% Christians in India. 
India has 14 major languages and at least 2,000 dialects. Perhaps the greatest cause of diversity is the caste system. Hindu society is divided into anywhere between 200 to 300 castes. India is the world's most densely populated country with 1.34 billion people. On an average, 1,060 people live per square mile in India. Our work centers in the state of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, the Telugu-speaking people, which is the southeast part of the country. The population of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana is nearly 90 million people. I live in Kakanada, which is on the east coast. I was saved in 1973. I surrendered to preach in 1975, and I studied at Tri-State Baptist College in Memphis, Tennessee from 1977 to 1980. Then I finished my master's degree at Baptist Christian University in Shreveport, Louisiana in 1980 through 1981. Since 1981, I am in the ministry of this mission work in India. God has blessed the ministry through your prayers and your financial support. Our outreach in India is as follows. Our main goal is to establish local independent Baptist churches. We have established more than 350 churches in these two states since the beginning of this ministry from 1950 till now. First, we plan to have a gospel campaign for four to two days in a village or town. In these meetings, we present the gospel to the people. Usually there will be a few who will come forward for salvation, and then we ask them to obey the Lord in baptism. After this, we do the follow-up work and establish the group a people as a mission. Next, we appoint a suitably trained preacher to look over or after the mission and slowly we build that into a church. By the grace of God, during the last 10 years alone, we have started 40 new missions. We have annual revival meetings in each church or mission. This makes me very busy traveling to different churches and missions throughout the year. We also have regular youth retreats, ladies retreats, and pastors meetings. We have fundamental Baptist Bible College to train our young dedicated men for the ministries. Many have been trained and are now on the field winning people and shepherding the churches. Evening Bible College was also started for the employees who wanted to learn the Bible and to be soul winners for Jesus Christ. This year there are 40 students in Rhodes. We have planned to teach all the ten doctrines of the Bible. We also have three children's home to cater to the needs of deserted and deserving children. The Lighthouse Children Home was started by Brother Larry Neff. There are 47 children in this home being educated. Their food and necessities are being met. Brother Sean Druitt started the Hope Children's Home at Visakhapatnam. Presently, there are 28 children. The Starlight Children's Home, with 12 children at the present, was started by Brother Dan Cash. There is also a large printing ministry going on. We print many varieties of tracts in English, Telugu, and in Hindi. Would you pray for us? As you know, there is an anti-Christian movement going on day by day in India. We need your prayers. We appreciate so much for your prayers and for the financial support. We cannot do this ministry without you. Thank you. Dr. G.R. Lorne started this mission work back in 1950. And your former pastor, Dr. Hall, is a good friend of Dr. Lone, and you've been supporting him uh, till he went to be with the Lord in 1993. And uh, once again, thank you for your continued support for this mission work. India is a, it's a different country. Uh, Dr. Omeli has been there 
and he has also been in our state. He knows what it is. There's a lot of diversities in India. There is a language diversities. Each state has each different language. Here I can travel from Virginia and then to uh, Carolina and to Florida or Texas or California. Everybody speaks the same language, English, maybe lit little variations. But in India, I cannot travel from one state to another state without knowing the language of the state. But in the South, you can travel by knowing a little bit of English, but not all the people would speak English. And you can travel in the North by knowing Hindi, but not all the states know fluently the Hindi. So that there's a uh, diversity of language. And also there's a diversity of caste system. People are not treated equally. There's a high, high caste and the low caste and in between so many castes. Major, there are four major castes in India and then in each major group there's a lot of several different castes. So the diversity makes it harder for the Christianity to move forward. In the past, when the missionaries came from abroad to India, because of the lower caste people could not enter into the Hindu temples, so the missionaries targeted the lower caste people. Now the stamp is that uh, if you say you are Christian, that means they think you are a lower caste people. Even though many high, higher caste people accepted the Lord, and even there are a lot of, lot of many preachers in the higher caste system also. But as a whole, uh, if you say you're, you, you went to a church or you converted to Christian Christianity, then they would think that you gone down, and it's a associated, associated with lower caste. So that's why some higher caste people don't want to come to Christianity. There is another diversity is uh, food habits. Southern people eat mostly rice and northern people eat mostly wheat. And northeast people, they are kind of mixed with the Chinese uh, uh, blood. So they eat uh, different, um, similar to Chinese food habits. So each place has each different food habits. Even the clothing and also some uh, varieties of uh, customs are different. So I think it's like a ba Babel in the Bible. Everything is a confused state. But, in, but God is doing wonderful things. Even though India is officially closed to foreign missionaries, many friends from this country come there to preach in our meetings and uh, churches, but the present government making a lot stricter for them to come to India. The average man who works for eight hours a day would get 500 rupees, that's about $7. The gasoline per gallon is right now is at uh, $6 per gallon. It's going up and up and up. The inflation is going very high. During the last two years, the COVID situation made us almost a full stop to the gospel work because we couldn't talk to each other. The social distance has to be maintained even in the churches. We have to wear the mask everywhere we go, even in the church. Even if, you're, if, if you are the only one traveling in the car, even then you have to wear the mask, if not, You'll get a ticket by police, I think almost 1,000 rupees. That's about a uh, mm, little over $12 or $13. Even now, even though the cases of COVID came down just two, three days ago, it's a little bit going up, but we have to maintain all the COVID regulations. One good thing came out of COVID is uh, we usually take 20 young people into the college 
to prepare them for the ministry every year because of the lack of facilities. But due to COVID, we could not take any uh, student, young man, physically. So we have to start, we did start online Bible classes uh, through Zoom, and uh, God has blessed it. This year, we have seen the enrollment of first year is 102 people, students. Second year, 60 third year almost 60 so we could able to teach and train almost 220 students instead of 20 so that's a blessing in disguise I guess Amen. so God has been good to us and uh, we do work in three states now Andhra Pradesh and Telangana both speak Telugu and Karnataka they speak Kannada so kindly pray for the ministry we're praying that we could able to get a bigger facility to teach many young men and send them throughout India. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Henry. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask our team to make our way over. We're going to sing a special tonight. Uh, this is our first time having Mr. Jared sing with us. Um, I did not know that Jared could sing. And... I was told by several people in the past few weeks that this guy has an amazing voice. And so we got to practice the other day, and I know I'm, I'm just teasing a little bit right now, but God has blessed him with a, a great voice, and um, we're excited to have him join us tonight. We're going to be singing a song we haven't done in a long time, and it's called About the Cross. If I only had one song that I could sing you Or a story I could tell before I leave If I only had one message I could bring you There's no question it would be about the cross, about the blood, about the place I found God's mercy and love, and although it's bitter sweet, remembering the cost, there's something beautiful. About the cross I could sing about the state of grace I live in Or the peace and joy I have when times are tough I could sing of all the blessings I've been given but in the end, my life is just about the cross, about the blood, about the place I found, God's mercy and love. And although it's bittersweet, remembering the cross. There's something beautiful about the cross. Two thousand years ago, if I had watched him die, I think I would have lost all hope, demanded to know why. But now I know that cross. Blood, 
about the place I found God's mercy and love and although it's bittersweet remembering the cost there's something beautiful about the cross so At last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown There's something beautiful I want you to take your Bibles, if you would please, and go with me to the book of Mark, and I'd like you to look with me at Mark chapter number 11. I do want to say thank you, church, for your kindnesses in letting me come, be praying for Pastor, that he will get better, he and Miss Dawn, and that they'll be able to go on their vacation as they intended, and be praying for you as you contemplate what to do with the increase in missions giving and Tonight, at the end of the message, everybody will be passed out a card. You say, well, I already did one this morning. I know, but those who haven't been able to turn one in, it doesn't make their card stick out. So if you get one, you get it, and then you put it back in. You don't have to fill it out again. Please don't. We've got enough duplicates for the day. But, but it, I feel so attacked. And, but I want you to take the card tonight. And then if you didn't get your card filled in this morning, this is your opportunity to do so with complete anonymity. And we will be able to count those cards up. And we already know we're going to make the red. Can we put the red light down again? No, no, I mean, not while I preach. It'll be so distracting. But I mean, we already know we're over 60. But let's just see what we can do the rest of the way. Mark chapter 11 and verse number 1. I want you to follow along. I, I look over and see our, our dear brother and his wife, Brother Matthew Henry, and his wife Queenie, and I am so grateful to be in their presence. Many of you will never get to go to India in your life. And, and, and we help people to get the gospel in India. But yes, I've been blessed to go to India a number of times, maybe six or seven times in my life, and you will f not find such rich hospitality like you'd find it in India. I have been treated so well and so kindly by our Indian brethren there. Yes, I've been to the state where he lives and serves. I've been in another town nearby, and we share mutual friends, Dr. Ramesh Kumar, Dr. Eric Franks, now with the Lord and the rest of his clan that are serving there. Wonderful people. It's hard to understand sometimes this idea of a caste system when you grow up in a system of equality. To say, well, there are people that could never enter here because of this. We, that's hard for us to understand. It's like everybody ought to have the right to do, but that's how we grew up. But if you grew up in a different culture, a different mindset, it's, it, it's completely opposite of what you would think. And then as he expressed, and I'm not trying to re-preach what you said, but to emphasize. So to say, okay, the Christians, the, the, the missionaries, reach the lowest caste people because they would respond. And then people who, and Calvary should make all the ground level at church, but you still deal with culture. And as you deal with culture, you realize, well, they're of that caste, or I can't be with them, or I can't marry, or I can't go to church with. And you just say, I don't like that system. That's the system where he has to plant the gospel. 
That's where he has to, he and his wife do their work. And so as you think of the Henrys, think of them and pray for them as they serve in an, and I can say this as an American, it would be difficult for you to say, but it, their government is hostile toward Christianity. When I say hostile, I mean opposed to. And the promises of a new politician don't look good because their politician, their prime minister is running unopposed. So it means more of the same. And it's quite difficult. So do pray for Brother Matthew Henry and his wife as they serve. Mark chapter number 11, verse number 1. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he, referring to Christ, sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, now here's his instruction, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went by their way, and found the colt tied by the door, without in a place where two ways met, and they loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees, and strawed them in the way. And they, went, they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Would you pray with me? Dear Father, thank you for the opportunity to read your word in the hearing of your people. And Father, as I seek to point out this very simple thoughts and the accompanying thoughts with this, I pray that you'll fill me with your spirit, that you'll help your people understand and Father, as we consider the weight of where we are as a church in giving to missions, and we think about the opportunity we have to make a difference in the world with the gospel, help us to see that in this passage tonight, and may we be responsive to your leading. For this I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I am taken back by one of the phrases that we read in this passage of Scripture. You say, well, what do you mean taken back? When I read the words, I believe the words because they're written in Scripture. They are Scripture. But when I read the words, I evaluate and I think, how is that possible? Kind of come with me here and look in verse number 3, nearing the second part of what Christ was saying. Verse 2, he talked about sending them on an errand. And in verse number 3, the Bible reads of Jesus' words, and if any man say unto you, why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him. That's an interesting phrase to me. You say, well, I'm not getting what you're getting. If you're saying that's interesting, you're just saying that the Lord needs something. But does he? Does the Lord really need anything? Does he not own all? Is he not in possession of all there is to possess? And that there's nothing on this earth that a man could give in exchange for the soul, his soul because God owns everything. And now in this very moment, Christ is saying, if anybody asks you, you tell them, I need this. Years ago, our son John was quite young. It was back when I was pastoring a church, so that would be 35 years ago. And our son, John, who would have been about four or five years old at that point, maybe three, 
would go over to my mother-in-law's house, to grandmother's house. On Tuesday nights, we would do visitation, soul winning, etc. on Tuesday evenings. And so we would always get John to grandmother's and she would watch him. And then after visitation, we would drive out to her house and pick him up. On one such occasion, I was out there and grandmother and John, who's quite young, are making cookies. And I'm thinking, my soul on earth, I do not want to touch one cookie that kid makes. I mean, I've seen where his hands go. Uh, it's like, why in the world would you ever ask a little kid to help you make cookies when you know that it's like a germ fest under his nails? And there he is, and he's messing with the cookie dough. And I'm thinking, I don't want anything. He's my kid, I get it, but I don't want anything to do with it. And, and grandmother had said to him at, at that point, she said, John, I'm going to make cookies, talking to my son. John, I'm going to make cookies. Do you want to help? And of course, he scurried over to grandmother and played with the bowls and dropped the spoons and licked the stuff. I mean, it was a tragedy. It was a nightmare just watching the whole endeavor. And I thought, she's a grown woman. Why does she need help making cookies? All she's going to get is a bigger mess. All she's going to get is just a disaster area to clean up. Why on earth would you ask a three or four year old to make cookies? Mrs. Vincent, why would you as a grandma? Because you love them. And you want to do something with them. Now, we didn't rehearse that. But as I'm telling that story, I watched her eyes brighten up because a grandparent does want to spend time. And it's not about making a bigger mess. And it's not because my mother-in-law lacked the skills to fix cookies. She had the skill set to do it. She knew how to make them. But all she was wanting was to spend time with John. Okay, you say, well, Brother O'Malley, the last we left off, there was a donkey tied at an intersection, and then you started talking about cookies. Well, they're related. Why would Jesus want to borrow some guy's donkey? Same reason. He wants to involve us in what he's doing. He wants us to be a part of what he is after. And that is the souls of men. So when, when he said, now I'm going to send you, and he gives him all these instructions, go to the village over against you, and you're going to come to a place where two ways meet, and you're going to see a donkey tied up, and then if anybody ever says anything to you about it, you tell them, I need that. Could not Christ, God's Son, have spoken a donkey into existence and his very presence? Of course he could. He's God. Could he not have summoned an army? Can you have an army of donkeys? Yes, we're going to have an army. He could have summoned an army of donkeys, a bunch of them, whatever you call them, a herd, something, whatever, and say all of them at his command, at his beckoning, he could have had all of them. But he didn't. He just said, would you let me use what you have to be a part of what I'm doing? It's the same as grandmother with John. Do you want to help me make cookies? And all the while, grandmother knows it's not about his skill set in cookie making. It's like, I, I, didn't, I didn't need any of them. I wouldn't have. But she wanted to have time with him. And when I look at this, I see the same account as Christ is saying to his disciples, I'm getting ready to do something. And I want to know if you want to help me. How did he have this arranged? Uh, really, really smart people could probably figure this out. I don't have that skill set. But somehow God communicated to the donkey owner, I'm going to need to borrow your donkey and I'll send some guys by to get it. And when they come, they'll say that I need it. But I also know that God just didn't need that. He just wanted to spend time with them. It's the same thing. If you'll allow me, it'll sound kind of funny when I say it. But God is going to make cookies all over the world. And he's saying to Central Baptist Church, you want to help? 
Do, do you, do you want to help? Because if you want to help, you can help. Amen. Amen. I'm going to make cookies with Central Baptist Church. Now, I'm going to make cookies anywhere in the world. I'm going to do that. The question is, is do you want to loan me your donkey? See, cookies work better than donkey. You, you, you're with me there, right? But, but he's saying, do you want to just be a part of what I'm doing? Because ultimately, I'm going to win souls. I'm going to reach people with the gospel. I think there are four very, I mean, ultra simple things that I think of when I read this passage and I think about lending things to the Lord. That's what we started to do this morning and Lord willing continue tonight to lend to the Lord, not for to make a light go on. We just turn the switch on if we wanted to lower the number, put the light on, whatever. But it's the fact of saying, I want to lend resources to God. Make cookies with him. Be involved in what he's doing. Here are four things that I think of. You can write them down. They're real simple. This man who owned the donkey helped Christ finish the job by lending to the Lord. And he did it, number one, without name recognition. What's the name of the guy who owned the donkey? I don't know. So well, how, how in the world could you loan Jesus your donkey and not say, hey, Bob's donkeys. Donkeys are us. Rent this donkey, Jesus wrote. No, he just did it without name recognition. You say, I don't know if I could do that. Well, if you're going to make cookies with Jesus, you're not going to spend the time saying, well, I put those chocolate chips in. I did that. No, you just simply say, you know what? I don't have to have name recognition. Do you remember the cards we filled out this morning? No place to put your name. Why? It's not about you. It's about souls in India. It's not about you. It's about helping churches get an interim pastor to help out until they can get a, a full-time pastor. It's about helping America's military. It's about reaching the gospel, reaching Mexico with the gospel. We're not here for name recognition. If you're looking for name recognition, you're not giving for His sake. You're not giving for the gospel's sake. It's not about tagging our name on to what we give. It's about just simply saying, it's about the cross. It's about the gospel. It's about him. Number two, I want you to see this. Not only did he lend to the Lord without name recognition, here's the second thing I want you to write down. He, he lent to the Lord without requiring reasons. <laughs> what do you mean, requiring reasons? Okay, so the negotiation between Jesus and the guy, right? So you want to borrow my donkey, huh? Why? Well, well, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride into town and this week they're going to cry Hosanna and next week they're going to cry crucify him and it all has to start on the back of a donkey. Well, how long are you going to keep him? Well, I'll just need him for the ride to town. Next week they'll crucify me. I won't need it long. Well, well what am I going to get out of it? I mean, could we walk out of price here, work out of price? None of that. He didn't require any reasons. He didn't ask how much it's going to cost or am I ever going to get it back. But he takes this unbroken donkey tied at a busy intersection. I, I, know, very, I know precious little about anything with animals. But just the science of what you're saying is, let's get a donkey that no one's ever ridden, we're going to walk it into town, we're going to tie it up at a post, then it'll be at the corner of two intersections, and then somebody's going to take that donkey, walk it back out of town, and then the first person to ever ride it is Jesus. You say, that sounds like nightmare written all over it. But not when God wants to use your resources. Do you realize your resources are worth more in God's hands than they are in your own hands? You say, well, well, that donkey, I mean, I had plans for that. But don't you think that the minute that Jesus mounted the back of that donkey, things were different in that donkey's life? Never had a donkey been broken by Christ before. 
just his mere touch or perhaps his whisper or just by divine intuition, just simply communicated to that donkey and say, we're going to ride. And we're going to ride through a town. Crying loud people are going to be yelling and I'm going to be on your back and I'm going to use you. You say, that's the best cookies I could have ever made. All I did was I just lent Jesus my time and look what he did. Yeah, he did it because the giver didn't seek re re name recognition. He did it because the owner did not require any reasons. Number three, I want you to see this just as plainly. He lent to the Lord without reservation. Why, how do I know that? He said, just tell the guys who ask you questions, Jesus needs him. So, Brother O'Malley, Jesus doesn't need my money. Jesus didn't need that guy's donkey. But all he wanted to do was say, I'm making cookies today. You want to help me? Do you want to be involved in what I'm being involved in? Do you want to take part of what I'm taking part? And he's saying to them, I'm not requiring any reasons and I'm not going to have any hesitation or reservation. If Jesus wants what I have, he can have it. Amen. Amen. That's right. Man. Say all that from a donkey? Yeah. And an owner that we'll never know until we get to heaven. And he did it. He didn't get his name mentioned. He didn't have any hesitation or reservation. And he did it. And he didn't require any reasons. Here's number four. It's the last point that I have tonight. And I believe that he also lent to the Lord without regard to the comments of those standing around. He did so without regard to those standing nearby. You say, what are you saying? Go with me now, if you would, please. And in, in verse number five, this is probably a phrase, if you're interested in different kinds of Bible study, to use that phrase and certain of them. It always seems in the church crowd, there are, are certain of them that have something to say. Brother Vincent, 46 years at one church, there will always be a certain of them crowd. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? Why are you taking the donkey? I don't think you ought to be taking the donkey. That donkey's not yours. I think we had a better purpose for that donkey. That donkey was just fine. Now you want to take the donkey and drive all over the city and pick up bus kids. With me? You want to take our money and send it all over the world? We need stuff here. Why on earth would we send our money around the world? They'll always be certain of them. In my mind... Brother Matthew Henry, their arms are crossed. And so is their attitude. Hmm, what are you doing taking the donkey? It's not your donkey. That's my cousin's neighbor's brother's sister's donkey. That's about making it a neighbor right at that point. You say, you, don't, you have no right to touch that donkey. But boy, when you, when you pull out the, the trump card on that one and say, Jesus needs it, it's like... Okay, Jesus needs this. But there'll always be people, in fact, maybe in your own family. All you do is take those kids to church. All you do is give all your money at the church. All you do is take them from one church event to another church event, one revival meeting to another revival meeting. When on earth are my kids gonna, grandkids are going to be able to do this or that? It'd be far better to only listen to the comments of God than to ever listen to the comments of the certain of them who stand by and criticize. And so the message is delivered. Jesus needs this donkey. When I look at this passage and I think about that night with John at grandmother's house, I think about what you did today and what you'll finish, hopefully finish up tonight doing. And that is this. God wants to make cookies with you. Don't hold back. Amen. Don't try to make a name for yourself. Say, well, well, I want my missions dollars to only go 
to Dr. Matthew Henry and his wife. I don't want to support these other missionaries. I only want to... Don't do it with requiring reasons. Don't do it with regard to the comments of those around you. Don't do it for name recognition. Just simply say, the Lord needs what I have, then He may have it. Would you stand with me? Your Father, tonight I, I ask you to help us as we evaluate what we've put in, what we might put in, what we're contemplating about what we put in, in regard to, to making cookies with you. What a joy, what a gift it is to think that, that you could use stuff we have Lord, I know you could, you could win souls without us. You could, you could just will everyone to be saved. You don't need us to make a mess in your kitchen. But God, it's just like Miss Vincent said. You love the kids and you just want to be with them. Father, it blows me away that you would want to be with us and use our resources when we'll make just a big mess, but you just want to be in the kitchen with us. Father, thanks for inviting Central Baptist Church to make cookies with you. Thank you for thinking of us and letting us offer what precious little things we have that you want to use. In Jesus' name. Your heads are bowed, eyes are closed, Amy's beginning to play. Why don't you come tonight and say, God, whenever you want to make cookies with me, I'm available. Whether it's Port, Portsmouth, Newport News, India, Mexico, the military, whatever you want, God, I'm all in. Whatever you want, without name recognition, without requiring reasons, without regard to the comments of those around us, without reservation. Oh, I know it's an odd turn of words to say to make cookies with Jesus. But grandmother could have made those cookies on her own, but she didn't. She wanted to involve her grandson. Central Baptist Church, he's going to make cookies. You want to help? It's easy to give the money when it becomes us. That's where it all rubber meets the road, if you will. Can he have you? Without name recognition, without requiring reasons, without reservation, without regard to the comments of those around you. I'd hate to be the kid that said, nah, Jesus, I don't want to do that. I just want to stay right here with doing what I'm doing. Some are still praying. Does he have everything? Maybe this is the year where you say, you know, I've been given the faith promise all these years. Now I just want to give me.
Thank you so much. You may be seated. Church family, may I have some ushers who can help me distribute cards? Church, I know you received cards this morning. Many of you filled them in. And thankfully, Miss Sandy corrected, got them calculated right for us. And we're going to count on you again, Miss Sandy. I may help, but that's about it. But tonight, would you take a card? That way, those around you who may need to fill one in, you don't have to fill it in twice. But just if you would fill out the card and then we'll get these tabulated quickly and let you know the amount as of tonight, okay? And so what we'll do now is ask our guys, there's kids' cards and adult cards, off you go, to just uh, take them with you and share them. Get one to everybody. You say, I already did it. I know. But I want you to have a card and then that way everyone can get a card and then those who need to fill it out can. And then you can just turn in a blank card and that'll be fine. Church, please help me. There were, th there were cards this morning that some didn't mark how often they'll be giving. That really messes up the math. Because we don't know, know to times by 12 or 26 or 52. We, don't, we just don't know. So make sure you fill out your card properly and that way we can have an accurate count because when we get cards we don't know what to do with, we'll just put the one amount as the annual amount. So let's say somebody puts $50 and they don't mark anything weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, annually. We just make it annual because there's no way to figure that out. We figured that was the fairest way to do it. So make sure, and then, and then I counted some of them twice, stop judging. But, but if you would, go ahead and fill out your cards. And then Brother Carey is going to come and lead us in the church's official Faith Promise card picking up song. And we'll try to be quick this time without end error free. I'll come back to you. So we're actually going to do something a little bit different tonight, okay? I don't know about you, but I feel like we sang all three verses of Bring in the Sheep this morning about 20 times. So uh, we're going to try to change it up a little bit, okay? Even though that is a wonderful song, and it is exactly what we're trying to do um, by God's grace. We're going to go back and forth. Amy, bear with me. We're going to do a couple different songs, okay? Um, the one she is playing right now, I would like us to do um, while they're getting the cards. Guys, if, is there anyone else? Raise your hand if you have not. Filled out a card. Okay, let's go ahead and get all those back in. Um, let's go ahead and get those back in. And while they're getting those back in, let's sing number 539. We sang it this morning, but I want to sing it again. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. And let's sing uh, the first, second, and last verse on this. And then we're going to do another song as well, okay? Ready on 539. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. The erring one, lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, a mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. Good, there you go. On the course, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. On that last verse, rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Bring for thy labor, the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer, a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing. Jesus will save. Amy, they're sounding so good. Let's try the third verse together. Ready? Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, 
Feelings like buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness. Lords that are broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Amen. Let's go ahead and turn to number 489. Number 489. Amy was just playing this as our invitation, and um, I think we'll be ready in just a few moments as they're still getting this stuff ready. But in order, I was, I told someone on Wednesday night, I was really praying and asking God, Lord, would you help us, would you help us double it? God, would you give us even 100,000? And then when Brother John O'Malley preached, God changed that, and he turned it. Carrie, it's not about the money necessarily as it is the heart. And um, as much as I'd like to get to 100,000, I'd rather have a 100 people that would be fully surrendered to God. And so, Brother Malley, do we have it? All right. Praise God. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. $69,230.46. $69,230.46. That's for my dad as he's watching back home. Man, praise the Lord. God is so good. Aren't you glad for that? Would you stand up together? I'll tell you what, Miss Amy, let's change it. Let's go to 596 real quick. We were, I, I really should have done this this morning. A lot of times we get out of here too quickly. But I want to praise the Lord for what He has done and what He's doing and what He's going to do. Um, you should already know this one by heart, but let's sing this first verse together. 596, you should know some victory in Jesus. Let's give us all unto the Lord tonight. Ready? I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save us About his groaning of his precious blood, atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me. Redeeming blood, praise God. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cliff. Let's do the last verse together. Ready? I heard about a mansion he has built for me. About the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. that was but it was really good all right <laughs> um, wonderful I tell you what thank you so much for being here this week I know my dad would love to be here and uh, pray us out but um, I'm gonna ask brother Daniel would you close us in a word of prayer and just pray for the missionaries as they're traveling and uh, thank the Lord for what he's done
Amen. You are dismissed. Thank you.